In this episode, I'm going to cover using the refresh indicator. I'll start off by adding the refresh indicator to the list view. I'll show how to handle the refresh and then what it takes to complete the refresh. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to go to the IDE and I've already got a bare bones project created and you can see the project on the left. It's a simple application with a list view with a few items in the list. And what I want to do is be able to pull down here and see the refresh indicator, which is a arrow that circles around a circle. And so how do I do that? Well, if I look at my scaffold, and that scaffold has a list view. I simply want to add a wrapper, which is the refresh indicator. So I'm going to cut this out and paste it back in as a child of the refresh indicator. So I'm going to go new refresh indicator. And there's a couple requirements to finish this refresh indicator. And that is I'm going to paste in what I just had and fix the syntax. And then I'm going to do anonymous function here to start with. And so I'm going to go C command alt L for auto formatting and I'm going to add a trailing comma there and do it one more time. Okay. So the trailing comma allows me to stack it a little better in this syntax. Okay. So what I want to do is test it. So I'm going to hot reload it and then I'm going to drag it down. Okay. So there's the refresh indicator. So I've got two issues to solve here. One, what I do on the refresh indicator and two, how do I complete it? So I'll finish that next. So I'm looking at my refresh indicator and it has a re on refresh. So I'm going to delegate this to a method. So I'm going to pass this. I'm going to go handle refresh and then I'm going to auto complete the method by going hitting alt enter on it, alt enter, and I'm going to create method handle refresh. Okay. So that creates a method down below and I don't need to return anything on this case. Well, actually I do. Now I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to go future and it's going to be a null and for return. So I got to complete this future. I got to load it the library. So alt enter auto import and, or auto assist. And I'm going to select import async library. And what I want to do now is while I do it, let me change something visibly. Well, I set a count for my list. So the count is then used as I, so was zero, one, two, three, five. If I refresh it, I'll just update the count so I can tell it was refreshed. So I'm going to go set state and just say, okay, Hey, the count was updated. So let's go count. And then I'll go, let's say add five, uh, five to the count. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to, let's say return Turn, I'll just say return null for to start. Let's just verify that works. And I got to add null. Okay, return null. And then I'm going to reload it from the beginning. Oops, I have an error. Oops, I, I'm going to add async here and then save it. Okay, so what I want to do is fix that error. And when I was flying through this tutorial, I had added parentheses up here, and that's not required to delegate to the function. So that was my mistake. Although it created it correctly it was improperly done. So I'm going to simply start from the beginning and get rid of the air. Okay. So now I have the refresh indicator. You can see that it updated the data here. Okay. But what if I have a call that I need to wait to wait for before I update it? So I simply can't just say, okay, immediately return a null. Well, in this case, I need to use a completer and that will allow me to wrap up a future. Or I can use the async and I can uh, write up my statements in a linear fashion, one by one, 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 and use the wait statement and return that. But in this case, I'm going to use the completer. So what is a completer? So let's go and I'll create a completer. And this is going to return a null because I don't need to return any data except for to say, oh, the future is complete. Now I like returning, I like using async because that allows me to just step through the process. But a completer is a nice way to do it as well. And so I'll go new completer, completer. And I'll say null as the generic value. And to the way you return a completer is go completer.future because you want to return its future. Okay, so now I'm set up and ready to go. Now this won't complete because there's nothing calling completer.complete. Now there's two, let me just show you completer.complete. And then there's a completer, a complete error. So you can return either the successful complete with some data or 
complete error and such. But anyways, I'm returning null in this case, so I'm gonna go complete, and let me just do this in line here, and do a save, and I'll, let me just start it from the beginning, so I have zero over here, and then I'm just gonna pull down, and it's gonna immediately complete. Okay, let's say I wanted to delay, delay um, a future here, so I'm gonna go new future, dot delayed constructor new duration and I'm gonna say seconds and there let's say three seconds I think that should be a good enough amount of seconds and then I'm gonna say um, there's nothing I need to do here so I'll just create a empty function body but I want to say after that duration that future I want to call my completer completer dot complete in this case, I could be emulating a database call or some other process that could be happening during this refresh lifecycle. Okay, so I'm gonna go up here and start it from the beginning because I wanna start from zero here. And I'm gonna drop down the completer. We should see it refresh for three seconds. And there it goes, it updated. So I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so it's refreshing and let's say I want to refresh it. Uh, let's set the state after, let's change the demo a little bit here. Change the set, the state after three seconds and call complete. So let's just see what that looks like. I'm gonna restart it from the beginning and I'm gonna hold down and reload. Okay, so there's the refresh indicator and there it is it updates and sets a state after the completion call so that works great so there's a couple different ways you could do it well let's say i want to um, just await for it let me change that configuration to show you what i was talking about earlier so i'm going to wait for it because it's an async method so i'm going to simply await and get rid of the completer and i'm going to return null here return null, return null. And I forgot I was gonna set the state and I wanna do the count is now gonna be plus equal to five, increment it to five, and I got a double return, syntax error. Okay, so I'm gonna reload it from the beginning and see what happens here. So we should be able to pull it down or I should be able to pull it down and it's gonna reload three seconds and we should have an update of the state. Okay, awesome. So there's two ways you can do it. You could return a completer, or what I think is a little bit better as, as the linear syntax because you can write it in steps in here, and this async me method is the magic for that syntax. So that's adding the refresh indicator to a list view. So that concludes this video today. Thanks for watching. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter, and I'll catch you later.